Hello students of class 6 good morning so welcome back to chapter number 1 owls in the family we will be starting from page number 12 the last paragraph so now there is an unselfish mother for you so previously we have learned that she was this uh, owl this mother owl was trying to protect her babies and uh, she was attacking then the grandfather and the narrator but when she understood that her babies were in good care she was evidently sorry for her behavior and she was greeting with a soft hoo hoo to the author and the narrator and the grandfather so now there is an unselfish mother for you said grandfather it's obvious she would like them to have a good home and they were probably getting a bit too big for her to manage so the two owlets became regular member of our household and strangely enough we were we were among the few pets that grandmother took a liking to so so uh, the grandfather said that this uh, the mother was not selfish she was unselfish and uh, she would obviously uh, she would like them to have a good home so the mother would genuinely try to give their owlets a good home which was a good home for uh, the two owlets in grandfather's and the narrator's home and they were probably getting a bit too big for her to manage okay every day food um, it was getting tough for the mother outlet and uh, for the for the mother to feed the two babies so these two outlets these two baby outlets were a regular visitor to the author's home and they used to come there every day and the grandmother author's grandmother took a special liking to these owlets she objected to all snakes most monkeys and some crows but she took quite a fancy to the owls so grandmother had a special liking for the owlets she did not like the snakes that grandfather took a pet most monkeys she did not like but she liked these two owls and frequently fed them on spaghetti so she used to feed them noodles they seemed quite fond of spaghetti in fact the owls became so attached to grandmother that they began to show affection towards anyone in petticoat means these two owlets were so obsessed with grandmother that whoever they see with a petticoat they used to think that this is grandmother and they used to fly towards that petticoat uh, to, towards that petticoat whosoever is wearing including aunt mabel who was terrified of them so grand uh, aunt there was also an aunt aunt mabel and she was genuinely very afraid of these two owlets so some of the times she used to wear the petticoat and the owls used to go towards her thinking it as grandmother and she used to get and she used to get get terrified okay she would run shrieking from the room every time one of the birds sid sidled up or to her in a friendly manner so she used to shriek she used to shout in a loud manner if one of the birds or in one of the owlets used to go to her she used to run from one room to another forgetful of the fact that grandfather and i had reared them so she used to forget the or the owls used to forget that their main guardian were grandfather and the narrator because they were the ones who brought them the owls would sometimes swell their fingers and snap at anyone in trousers to avoid displeasing them grandfather wore a petticoat at feeding time 
I compromised by wearing an apron. So, these owls were so liking, were wearing so liking with grandmother that they even did not like grandfather. Okay, so they had a special affection for grandmother only, and whenever grandfather used to feed to owls he used to wear the petticoat so as to make these owls think that uh, she, uh, that is grandmother to avoid displeasing them grandfather wore a petticoat at feeding time and i compromise and the narrator wore what narrator wore an apron to compromise in response to grandfather's voice, the owlets would make sound as gentle and soothing as the purring of a cat. But when wild owls were around, owls would rend the night with blood curdling shrieks. So, in response to grandfather's grandmother's voice, the owlets would make sounds as gentle and soothing as purring of a cat. So, whenever grandmother used to call these two owls they used to do a soft hoo hoo so as to so as to show their affection towards grandmother but when the wild owls used to come outside and chirp what they they used to fright they used to get terrified and shout shout in a very awkward way their nightly occupation was catching beetles. So, this is important. What, what they used to do the whole night, they, their occupation was catching beetles, uh, which the kitchen quarters were full of at, that, at the time. Within their sharp eyes and powerful beaks, they were excellent pest destroyers. So, they used to kill the insects pests. The owls loved to sit and splash in a shallow dish especially if cold water was poured over them from a jug at the same time. So, their favorite place is a shallow dish where cold water was poured. They would get thoroughly wet, jump onto the porch, shake themselves and then return for a second splash and sometimes a third. So, they used to take a bath by in this in that shallow dish so they used to they used to play uh, with the water in the dish they used to uh, they would fly back and then again come then splash on the water and then again go back so during the day they dozed in large cages under the trees in the garden so where they used to stay it is important they needed cages for protection against attacks from wild birds so, why they were put inside a cage? So, that they could be protected from the wild birds. At night, they had the freedom of the house where they exercised their wings as much as they liked. So, at night, they had every freedom to roam inside the house. So, they used to fly from here to there, everywhere in the very nook and corner of the room. So, they had no restrictions during it. Uh, during the night time. Superstitious folk who fear the cry of the owl may be interested to know that mice accepted there were no ex unexpected deaths in the house during the owl's residence. So, uh, some might think that owl's cry, uh, the owl's chirp is very bad omen. Mm, means, ghar pe kuch dukh bhari kuch le aata hai. But it's not so, nothing happened. So, author is also mentioning this that ek mais ke alawa koi nahi mar gaya hai uske ghar mein. So, looking back on those owlish days, I carry in my mind a picture of grandmother with a contented look. Contented means very satisfied, there is no tension in her look. Look, look in her rocking chair, you can sit in the picture. Once on her entering room, while she was having an afternoon nap, I saw that one of the owls had crawled up her pillow till its head was snudged, snuggled under her ear. Both grandmother and the little owl were snoring. So, as grandmother was keeping the pillow behind her head, so one owl crawled up 
towards grandmother's shoulder and it also laid um, on her shoulder keeping her head near um, her ear so this is the look that grandmother uh, that the author remembers when he goes back to those owlish tales so we come to know by this that the owl became very famous or very attached the actual word is attached towards grandmother so by this we come to the end of this chapter it has been written by rusking bond he was british indian author best known for his short stories set in the himalayan towns his first novel the room of the roof written when he was 17 won the john lewen rees memorial prize he received the sahitya academy award for his collection of short stories are trees still growing there okay so we'll revise it once we come on during the online class so have fun have a good day bye bye